Hello and welcome to Bio for You. Okay, in this video, we're going to learn uh, about chapter 2.5, uh, Biogeochemical Cycle. Okay, so here is the objective. We're going to, uh, you should be able to explain the biogeochemical cycle. Okay, so um, before we go any much further, before we go again, uh, before we go start to discuss much more complicated things, let makes things simple. Okay, so apa di bio geochemical cycle ni? Okay, so bio means uh, living organisms, geo means berkaitan dengan um, uh, bumi dan sumber apa yang ada di bumi, and chemical, iaitu chemical lah. Uh, dan we are we are going to talk about the cycle. So if you refer to this simple simplified diagram over here. Okay, sebenarnya apa kita nak cuba bincangkan adalah saya ambil satu contoh uh, chemical yang kita nak tengok cycle iaitu carbon. Okay, so kalau carbon ni, um, dia akan, uh, dia terdapat dekat dalam fossil fuels, dekat dalam uh, minyak yang terdapat dekat dalam uh, tanah, dekat bawah laut tu kan. Minerals in rocks, sediments in oceans. So, ni semua dipanggil sebagai reservoir inaccessible reservoir makna carbon tu dia terenap dekat situ dia tidak uh, tidak digunakan uh, directly makna kita simpan saja dekat tu carbon carbon dekat dalam minyak dan sebagainya sebagainya tu petrol semua tu ada carbon kan okey and then baru dia akan pergi ke exchange pool exchange pool ni mana uh, dia ni mana dia become available next to kepada biotic community siapa biotic community kita lah animals dan juga termasuk plants. Okay, so itulah biotic communities yang akan menggunakan carbon tersebut. And also you can see that this uh, there is this arrow uh, pointing back to exchange pool and then the arrow pointing back to this reservoir. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, so simply kalau saya macam saya ambil contoh tadi tu carbon. Carbon daripada, um, contohlah carbon daripada tanah. Okay, ataupun uh, daripada fossil fuel. Lepas tu, uh, pergi ke exchange pool. Okay, digunakan oleh um, living organisms, biotic community. And then, uh, bila dah digunakan, contoh macam kita, human kita akan also uh, exhale CO2. Ada carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide tu pergi balik ke atmosphere and somehow from atmosphere, dia boleh return balik pergi ke uh, reservoir ni dalam bentuk um, sediments in oceans, minerals in rocks ataupun fossil fuel dan sebagainya itu gambaran kasar Buka, uh, belum lagi secara detail dan belum lagi secara uh, dengan lebih tepat lah ni gambaran kasar ataupun asas sahaja dulu so itu yang dimasukkan biogeochemical cycle geo berkaitan dengan muka bumi I mean dengan bumi uh, bio is the living organism chemical is we are going to talk about the chemical and we are going to understand and learn their cycle Okay, so biogeochemical cycle in terms of uh, dia punya uh, correct uh, apa ni, a definition dia. It is a process by which matter cycles from the living to non-living. Living itulah living biotic, non-living to abiotic. Okay, physical, uh, non-living, physical environment and back again. Maknanya dia baik secara kita. Contoh yang kita nak study adalah carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle and also phosphorus cycle. So this diagram shows you matters flow through the ecosystem from one organism to another and the flow of chemical element in an ecosystem are constant. Maknanya berterusan. Bukannya flow tu sekali cycle dah stop. Ya, dia dah constant, berterusan. Okay? So, components of biogeochemical cycle. So, dia terdiri daripada cycling pool and also reservoir pool. So, apa itu cycling cycling pool? Cycling pool ni bukanlah swimming pool untuk orang cycle ber, cycle berbasikal dalam tu. Tak, cycling pool ni adalah takungan ataupun kitaran yang di mana uh, sentiasa actively digunakan. Uh, macam contohnya atmosphere dengan kita Mas, uh, Dengan kita maknanya Kita always return CO2 to the environment I mean to the atmosphere And then we also uh, get the um, carbon from the source that we are eating So itulah cycling pool contohnya lah Okay So of course it involve biotic components Kita contohnya animals alright The portion of the of the environment Where organism takes their nutrient Daripada persekitaran dia Okay, manakala reservoir pool involve abiotic components Benda yang bukan hidup iaitu the portion atau region of earth For example, uh, bukan for example, which are atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere That acts as storehouse for chemical element Storehouse tu maknanya sebagai macam 
kira macam gudang atau tempat simpan yang tak digunakan uh, yang disimpan saja dekat situ contoh macam dekat atmosphere kan ada part yang um, yang di mana uh, contoh nitrogen tu hanya stay dekat dalam uh, atmosphere sahaja ok so itu adalah reservoir pool ok so this diagram also simplifies um, uh, the geochemical cycle from the main nutrient okay pergi ke electricity boss but don't worry much we going to look into the detail uh, from this diagram okay so ni another diagram showing you okay nampak kita ada uh, line with uh, arrow with purple color and arrow with green colors so the purple color involve the human activities so from the reservoir pool uh, i.e. such as fossil fuel dia digali oleh manusia and then dia digunakan Uh, directly lah uh, oleh biotic community ataupun daripada reservoir pool ni uh, dengan aktiviti manusia ni uh, dia boleh uh, digunakan ok ataupun contohnya dia pergi ke, masuk ke exchange pool uh, dia masuk ke atmosphere dia masuk ke dalam soil boleh masuk ke dalam water untuk directly digunakan lah ok bila masuk bila kita cakap exchange pool ni dia adalah perantaraan antara reservoir pool dengan biotic community iaitu consumer sebelum kita gunakan dia Okay, so macam yang kita dah faham for Reservoir ni adalah fossil fuels And minerals in rocks ni Dia tidak actively digunakan Dia disimpan, reserve, reservoir ha, Macam tu Yang natural events ni maknanya macam contoh uh, Hewan tu mati And then dia pergi uh, ke exchange pool I mean the carbon itu I mean the the chemical tu pergi ke Contoh yang carbon tadi pergi ke exchange pool And then lama kelamaan dia menjadi Reservoir pool Okay, slide ni cakap pasal carbon, the carbon cycle. Bukanlah kita nak tengok setiap details ni dekat sini baca perpanjang ni. Okay, kenapa saya tunjukkan uh, slide ni with this, um, like this from this page. Nak tunjukkan ni sebenarnya gambar ni ambil daripada um, buku, tak saya buku Campbell. So, mana nak cakap if you refer to Campbell book or you refer to any major other references, you will be able to find good information regarding this carbon cycle. You can find the information regarding um, the biological importance of the carbon, the forms available to life, the reservoirs, the key processes, and etc. Okay. Next, uh, we're going to look into the detail of carbon cycle. So, sekarang kita nak faham. So, sekarang ni, awalnya tadi saya hanya bagi tu pasal um, pasal biogeochemical cycles. Okay. So, cycle antara contohnya yang kita perlu belajar lah. Carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, Okay, uh, carbon dah sebut tadi kan So, now kita nak tengok setiap satu persatu Kita start dengan carbon cycle Okay, so dalam carbon cycle uh, Apa dia? It's a cycle of carbon between abiotic and biotic compounds Okay, abiotic benda bukan hidup Biotic adalah benda hidup Carbon is essential for proteins, nucleic acids, lipids and carbohydrate Macam kita tahu lah dekat dalam protein tu pun ada um, carbon Dekat dalam our DNA juga ada carbon Dalam lipids Uh, pun juga ada karbon Dalam carbohydrates lagi lah Obviously ada karbon yang CH2, OH semua tu kan uh, Okay So this is a good summary of a diagram Okay So macam saya sebutkan tadi Now it is better represented in this diagram Wood and fossil fuels Okay fossil fuels tu yang diambil daripada um, Daripada dalam laut lah kan uh, Itu petrol ataupun uh, diesel and etc Okay So burning of this fuel Okay, you will release the carbon uh, dioxide, okay, into the atmosphere. So, we have now the CO2 in the atmosphere is being later being used by the plant for photosynthesis, okay, and also algae and other cyanobacteria. Later, the plants will be consumed by the primary consumer, uh, such as this rabies and etc. Okay, so then the rabies also be consumed by the um, another herbivore, uh, another carnivore, and at the same time, this um, herbivore and carnivore also will do their cellular respiration process. When they respirate, they also will release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So this is a very short cycle and um, um, one part of uh, some part of the cycle that we have studied. So, fahamkan sekarang. Ni baru cerita sebahagian kecil daripada cycle uh, of carbon cycle ni tadi. Okay. So, kita sambung lagi. Let's say this uh, plants, animals, this animals semua mati, die. So, it will be consumed. Uh, same goes with this plants. Bila dia die, dead. So, it will be um, diuraikan oleh bakteria uh, oleh organism detritus. Okay. So, detritus ni later dia akan um, Uh, 
so dia akan uh, dia uraikan uh, haiwan ataupun pokok ni and the carbon in this uh, plants in this animals will be let be able to return to the atmosphere so we can see this is the cycle so the cycle will continue uh, okay so that's how you should understand this diagram okay now we're going to look into a bit more detail of the carbon cycle first we're going to look at the reservoir at the reservoir pools so reservoir pools um the first one is as more is atmosphere okay as co2 uh, carbon dioxide gas 0.04 percent of the atmosphere consisting of co2 okay so kita ada banyak carbon dioxide dekat atmosphere walaupun 0.04 percent saja but the amount is large enough Okay, hydrosphere, okay, iaitu air, ocean and fresh water as dissolved CO2. Yes, CO2 also can dissolve in water uh, in the form of carbonate and bicarbonate ion. Lithosphere, iaitu dekat dalam uh, rocks ataupun dalam tanah. Contohnya dekat dalam limestone, okay, batu kapur in the form of calcium carbonate. So, limestone ataupun batu kapur ni memang ter, uh, memang tinggilah kandungan calcium carbonate. So, bila kita cakap carbonate, carbonate tu, uh, so dia ada banyak carbon, okay. Proses that uses up carbon from atmosphere. Okay, apakah proses yang boleh uh, gunakan carbon daripada atmosphere ni? Okay, number one is carbon fixation. Okay, um, carbon fixation ni occur during uh, photosynthesis. Maknanya, uh, to by autotroph lah, iaitu plants, algae and cyanobacteria. Dia akan gunakan CO2 plus water to form carbohydrate plus oxygen. So, carbohydrate ni akan digunakan oleh animal lah. Okay, oleh herbivores untuk makan. Okay, and then carbon assimilation. Assimilation ni maksudnya digunakan, di assimilate, di diserap. Okay, diguna pakai. Okay, it occurs when animals eating the plants or other animals and they assimilate carbon tu untuk menjadi diri dia. Maksudnya sama dia nak buat tisu-tisu yang baru ataupun dia nak buat um, respiration dan sebagainya. Okay, so um, proses that uh, later apa yang proses yang boleh return carbon to atmosphere? Okay, contohnya adalah cellular respiration Occur in plants and also animals Maksudnya bukan animals saja buat cellular respiration Plants also do uh, uh, cellular respiration And some microorganisms also do cellular respiration So, bila respiration, kita akan exhale Kita akan release CO2 C, carbon So, kita akan release carbon to the atmosphere ha, Tadi, CO2 digunakan oleh plant uh, Digunakan oleh plant untuk buat photosynthesis uh, kita cellular respiration return CO2 to the atmosphere and decomposition maknanya haiwan itu mereput alright occur in the breakdown of dead plants and animals by the decomposer such as bacteria and fungi okay process that release carbon to atmosphere sambungan dia yang ketiga combustion pembakaran so when we burn combustion by human return CO2 in coal oil peat and woods to atmosphere Okay, maknanya bila kita bakar, cecah tu bakar, arang, bakar, minyak, bukan kita bakar minyak lah, maknanya uh, petrol tu kan. Uh, okay, dia akan returnkan CO2 ke atmosphere. Coil, uh, coal, oil and peat are called fossil fuels. Peat ni adalah tanah gambut. Uh, so, bila somehow we accidentally uh, bakar tanah, dia akan also return um, carbon to the atmosphere. Because they also form a uh, from remains of ancient organisms, vast deposits of carbon, Compound. Maksudnya, uh, ini apa, uh, apa maksud point ni, ni adalah cakap pasal uh, contohnya oil lah, fossil, fossil fuels ni lah. Fossil fuel ni kan dia terbentuk daripada remains of ancient organisms. Ancient uh, organisms, organisms zaman purba, zaman dahulu. Okay, yang ada banyak carbon compound. Dan yang seterusnya adalah weathering, iaitu dia disebabkan oleh uh, cuaca. Okay, so shells of mollusk contain calcium carbonate. Okay, apa tu shells of mollusk? Mollusk ni contohnya seperti kerang, uh, kepah dan sebagainya semua tu. Dia punya cengkerang tu, shell tu contain a very high amount of calcium carbonate. Uh, kulit kerang tu contohnya. So when this mollusk die, Uh, 
kerang tu their shells sink to the bottom and deposited as limestone maknanya akan menjadi batu kapung ok the process of chemical and physical weathering of this limestone slowly erode menghakis eh, ok erodes it away to return CO2 to atmosphere and water uh, so maknanya Carbon yang ada dekat dalam cengkerang, uh, ceng, cengkerang ialah shells of the uh, shells of the shell in English is shell uh, kerang itu cengkerang of kerang, okay? So kat dalam tu ada banyak carbon, kas dalam bentuk kasi carbon. So bila dia membentuk batu kapur, okay dekat dalam uh, laut dan sebagainya, lama-lama dia sebabkan oleh weather dan sebagainya, dia akan return balik, dia akan menghakis uh, uh, limestone tersebut, and uh, carbon itu akan release to the environment okay so this is an example of a photo showing you a sedimentary rock on the bottom of sea floor may lift to form land surfaces okay kita kadang pernah dengar kan um, tanah atau batu-batu dekat bawah tan bawah laut tu dia boleh uh, dia boleh uh, lama kelamaan sedikit demi sedikit naik dan naik ke surface permukaan laut lama-lama menjadi uh, land surfaces permukaan uh, bumi so bila menjadi permukaan bumi lagi senanglah untuk kesan weathering bila hujan apa semua kan dia akan menghakis batu-batu ini dan merilis uh, they will release the CO2 to the atmosphere okay so this is a uh, it's a similar diagram for I've shown before but uh, much more information in this diagram so we can see this CO2 um, being used by the uh, plants algae cyanobacteria okay and then we can see that this um, uh, plants will later eat dead animal dead okay so all these uh, plants dead organisms okay will be decomposed and the soil and uh, soil and water microbes are return balik co2 to the atmosphere dead organisms also can be sequestered sequestered ni di digunakan uh, maksud apa ke maksud digunakan tu maknanya boleh digali lah okay uh, digali and then digunakan untuk uh, buat fossil fuel dan sebagainya ada juga dissolve CO2 yang akan continue the cycle and etc ok so ok this is just another diagram you guys can refer this ok similar alright with what we have learned before and same goes with this one so this is mostly much about the carbon cycle so question may comes out like this so they will give you a diagram and they can give you the label for each of this arrow you need to know you must be able to identify what is the name of the process okay so for example i take the most the easiest of the most okay which is b co2 from um, atmosphere uh, used by the plants okay so there is photosynthesis okay so what is c b e and a you figure out yourself from the previous slide okay you also can refer to your lecture notes okay so now we're going to move on into a uh, nitrogen cycle okay again you can refer to these details you can make these readings from the book uh from solomon book from campbell from totora okay so they are good references okay so now we're going to look at nitrogen cycle okay nitrogen uh, it is important because nitrogen as part of amino acids proteins and nucleic acids and is often a limiting plant nutrient okay apa maksud dekat sini dalam badan kita kita perlukan protein uh, protein tu the smallest part tu adalah amino acid so bila amino acid tu kan ada NH3 ada nitrogen dekat situ and of course lah dekat nucleic acids tu juga ada Nitrogenous base If you still can recall What you have learned From your semester 1 Okay Bila nitrogenous base tu Of course lah Dia ada nitrogen So without this nitrogen How can you have Protein in our body How can you have Nucleic acid DNA In our body It's not possible So that's why Nitrogen is very important Okay And it's often Selalu menjadi Limiting plant nutrient Selalu menjadi uh, Plant ni selalu Tumbuh ni selalu Tak cukup nutrient Nitrogen Okay Okay, form available to life and dalam uh, nitrogen dalam bentuk yang available kepada hidupan Okay, uh, adalah plants Okay, plants can assimilate boleh menggunakan two inorganic forms of nitrogen Iaitu dalam bentuk ammonium dan nitrate Kenapa dia panggil inorganic? Maksudnya tidak ada carbon di situ Nampak ammonia on the NH4 Do you see any C, any carbon over there? No, that's why it is called as inorganic So, ammonium and nitrate and some organic forms such as amino acids. Ialah amino acids kan ada carbon dekat dalam dia. Okay, remember, 
um, tengah-tengah center of amino acid tu ada carbon. Okay, various bacteria can use all of these forms as well as nitrit. Uh, bacteria pula boleh guna hampir kebanyakan bentuk nitrogen itu tadi. Walaupun dalam bentuk yang rare, uh, rare pula, dalam bentuk yang raw. Iaitu just uh, nitrogen gas itself, bacteria boleh gunakan dia. Kalau plant, dia tak boleh terus directly ambil nitrogen daripada atmosphere. Dia boleh ambil tapi dalam bentuk ammonium ataupun yang dah ditukar dalam bentuk ammonium atau dalam bentuk nitrate. Manakala animals can only use organic forms of nitrogen. Maksudnya hanya dalam bentuk contoh dalam bentuk amino acid yang dah bergabung dengan carbon organic forms of nitrogen ialah animal um, dia hanya boleh makan tumbuhan yang dah mengandungi protein ha, itu adalah organic okay. so uh, nitrogen dalam nitrogen cycle dia punya reservoir pool ya okey so the main reservoir is, is the atmosphere dekat dalam atmosphere lah sebab which is 78% of uh, atmosphere is composed of nitrogen gas yes around a 78% is nitrogen gas okey others okey uh, nitrogen can be found in soils and sediments of lakes rivers oceans surface water and groundwater and biomass of living organisms itu adalah reservoir pool reserve yang tak digunakan maksud tak digunakan tu bukan maksud tak berguna tidak digunakan tu maksud tidak actively digunakan not actively being exchanged between the animal or between the organism and the abiotic okey So this diagram, okay, I'm going to just show you um, just uh, roughly uh, from this diagram because on each of the slide, on the following slides for nitrogen cycle, we will keep on be talking about this same diagram. Okay, so basically this diagram is telling you uh, is that from the nitrogen in this uh, in the atmosphere, okay, it can be uh, used by nitrogen fixing soil bacteria for Uh, producing uh, ammonium and etc and what i want you to look at what i want you to refer at is at this numbering number one two three number four and number five because each of the step later after this we are going to discuss in detail each of these steps so i'm going to skip the detail for now okay as promised From this slide, you can see I've put, I've incorporated this slide again. So, we are now going to talk about point number one. The process that can convert nitrogen to usable form, which is nitrogen fixation, which is this point number one. Okay, so it is the process where conversion of atmospheric nitrogen gas to forms that can be used to synthesize organic nitrogen compounds okay it can occur through three processes so uh, the first one is biological fixation atmospheric fixation and industrial fixation we will look into each of this um, on the following slides okay so but bear in mind what we are apa yang kita nak bincang sekarang ni adalah macam mana nitrogen dekat dalam atmosphere boleh digunakan how do we fix the nitrogen to be able to be used by the organism okay now we look at the first one okay biological fixation so for biological fixation it is done by, it is done by nitrogen fixing bacteria hanya bacteria sahaja yang boleh buat uh, ni Okay, and there are two types of that, or of this, uh, of those which are symbiotic bacteria and non-symbiotic bacteria. Symbiotic ni maksudnya dia dua-dua untung. Bacteria tu untung, pokok yang ditumpang tu pun untung. Ayat the host is untung, so this symbiotic lah. Okay. Okay, contoh adalah rhizobium sp. Non-symbiotic ni adalah yang free living. Dia tak ber gantung dengan sesiapa dia hanya hidup dia sendiri lah dia tak ada buat simbiosis dengan interaction dengan apa-apa okey contohnya adalah azotobacter sp and also clostridium sp <coughs> okey for the symbiotic bacteria it lives in the root nodules of legume plants okey root nodules ni maknanya dekat uh, nodes nodes dekat macam uh, dekat akar contoh pokok kacang lah pokok kacang tanah tu yang ada bengkak-bengkak dia macam ada uh, apa ni bukan bengkak macam dia timbul besar-besar sikit itulah root nodules okey macam ni okey dekat root nodules tu of legume plant tumbuhan-tumbuhan legume contoh tumbuhan-tumbuhan legume ni yang mempunyai akar yang uh, akan mempunyai simpanan protein dekat dalam tanah contohnya macam kacang tanah macam 
um, potato macam apa lagi ubi kayu keledek ubi kayu kita sebut ha, macam semua lah keluarga, keluarga legume plants it will be this uh, symbiotic bacteria this rhizobium sp is able to convert nitrogen into nitrate ions okay nitrate okay and also nitric ions to be used by the legume plants remember the plants cannot use directly the uh, cannot um, you, uh, assimilate the uh, nitrogen gas directly to produce food tapi dia perlukan ditukar kepada bentuk nitrit or nitrate barulah pokok tu boleh gunakan nitrit or nitrate tersebut untuk buat protein dekat dalam badan dia I mean dalam badan tumbuhan itu The non-symbiotic or the free living bacteria Okay, dia memang tinggal dekat dalam tanah Ataupun dekat mana-mana Okay, dekat environment ni Dia directly boleh convert nitrogen gas Into ammonia Okay, and then this ammonia Will combine with hydrogen ions In the soil To form ammonium ion NH4 Bila ada bentuk ammonium ion Pernah dengarkan baja ammonia So, ammonium ion ni adalah Uh, is a important uh, nutrient lah for the plants so then ammonium ni can be used directly by the plant ok siapa yang buat kerja ni yang tukarkan yang boleh tukarkan nitrogen kepada ammonia ni adalah azotobacter dan juga clostridium ok <coughs> so next atmospheric fixation kan saya dah cakap tadi ada tiga cara kan nak ambil CO2 uh, sorry uh, nitrogen dekat dalam atmosphere masuk ke dalam Uh, ke dalam soil So the next one is lightning Ya yeah, betul iaitu petir halil, Halilintar okay. Lightning can causes nitrogen In the atmosphere to be Oxidized by oxygen Forming nitrogen Dioxide uh, NO2 Nitrogen dioxide later will dissolve In rain water to form Nitrous acid and nitric acid which will react with other compounds in the soil to form NO3 uh, ok so maksudnya dekat sini nitrogen uh, dioxide yang dissolve dalam uh, air hujan tu dia akan masuk dekat dalam tanah dan dia akan uh, react lah to form NO3 the nitric acid ok Um, and then later uh, to form nitrogen fertilizer such as ammonium nitrate and ammonium phosphate this will involve the harbor process okay this is by industrial fixation secara industri dibuat oleh manusia lah dekat kilang-kilang okay kenapa kilang-kilang perlu uh, perlu buatkan uh, dalam proses harbor proses ni korang belajar dalam chemistry tu because it's a very good business uh, because uh, plant fertilizer is a lucrative business okay so Through the harbor process, the factory will able to produce NH3 from the combination of nitrogen gas and also H2, which are okay, hydrogen. Okay, so NH3 is combined with nitric or phosphoric acid to form either ammonium nitrate or ammonium phosphate, which can be used be used by the plants. Okay, so that is the fertilizer. Alright, now we move on to the second one which is nitrification number 2. Here is very small one over here. So, nitrification ni, okay, kita tengok apa dia boleh buat. It is the conversion of ammonia or ammonium ion to nitrate by nitrifying bacteria. So, tadi tu ialah um, ammonia. Okay, ammonium ion nak tukarkan kepada nitrate ni. Nitrates NO2 negatif ni. Okay, so dibuat oleh nitrifying, nitrifying bacteria yang ada dekat dalam tanah. There are two steps of nitrification. Okay, yang pertama ialah uh, ammonia ni is oxidized to nitrate ions by nitrosomonas. Ya, yeah, nama bacteria ni adalah nitrosomonas sp dan uh, ataupun nitrococcus sp. Next, oxidation of nitrate ni tadi ions to nitrate. Okay. Uh, by nitrobacter yang ini ni dah ada nitrates kan dekat sini nak tukar uh, apa ni nak tukar kepada uh, oxidation of nitrate ini tadi uh, of of nitrate ion so tadi by nitrobacter ha, so saya pun dah tak salah so, sebab uh, is the tongue twister between nitrate 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 and ammonia and etc so um, 
for you guys, I know it's a it's a hard process to learn. Actually, you guys can easily understand this, but it's just that maybe you will have your mind twisted with the names, nitrate, nitrate, uh, ammonia, ammonium ion, and etc. Uh, take it um slowly. Try to digest the information and try to understand uh it slowly. And perhaps maybe you can you could create a mnemonics or. Or any tech you can apply any techniques on how to memorize these steps the conversion of ammonium kepada nitrate kepada nitrate baru boleh digunakan okay nitrate is different thing nitrate is different thing and do bear in mind the form that can be able to be used by the plants is the nitrate uh, not nitrate okay and these are the name of the bacteria all right and then assimilation. Assimilation is the point number three here. This one. Uh, so saya dah bagi tahu tadi kan. Nitrate lah is the only form. Uh, is the bukan the only form is the form that can be used or be assimilated by the plants. So the plants will absorb the nitrogen in the form of ammonium ions or nitrate ions. Bukan nitrate eh. Nitrate. Nitrate sebelum dia. And converts them into nitrogenous compound. Apa itu nitrogenous compound? Contohnya seperti protein lah. NH3 dan sebagainya yang ada kat dalam amino acid tu. Okay, animals pula akan absorb nitrogen tu bila dia makan tumbuhan itu ataupun bila dia makan haiwan lain. Mana haiwan makan haiwan lain lah. Uh, macam tu, assimilation digunakan. So, kita dah nampak lah nitrogen ni asalnya daripada atmosphere masuk ke dalam tanah. Ada beberapa cara tadi, lightning lah, harbor process lah, by the nitrogen fixing bacteria lah. Okay, and then uh, ditukarkan lah uh, ammonium ion tu ada nitrifying bacteria kepada nitrate and then nitrate ditukar kepada nitrate. Nitrate boleh tukar, boleh tukar, boleh tukar, boleh digunakan oleh plant. Plant dimakan oleh haiwan, haiwan dimakan oleh haiwan lain. So, that's now how you understand the science okay and the process that can convert nitrogen to usable form again okay, sambungan dia lah kan ammonification or decomposition number 4 point number 4 si. decomposition main ni mereput lah mati uh, mereput macam korang mereput tu kawan-kawan korang kan yang tak sama sampai okay decomposes okay such as fungi and bacteria alright it will convert the nitrogenous waste or the decaying matter nitrogenous waste ni contohnya seperti hmm, feces lah kan ok ataupun nada decaying matter haiwan yang dah mati atau organisme yang dah mati kepada ammonia or ammonium ion ok so itu adalah kerja fungi and bacteria ok that's number 4 just now and now we're going to move on to number 5 denitrification Okay, so denitrification ni apa dia? It is the process that release nitrogen back to the atmosphere. So, ada juga cara macam mana uh, nitrogen tu akan dipulangkan balik ke atmosphere melalui proses denitrification. This will involve, of course, in, uh, involve the denitrifying bacteria which is Pseudomonas sp. Okay, it will reduce the nitrate ions into nitrogen and release as nitrogen gas pergi ke atmosphere. Okay, so this is the summary of nitrogen cycle. Macam saya dah bagi tahu lah, question can come out like this using a diagram. Okay, so from the diagram, um, they will be making simplified like this, but they will also give you trouble okay with these labels okay so you should be able to identify and recall what is this label and what is the process and what is the significance of the process maksud significance tu kepentingan proses tersebut kenapa nak perlu berlaku tu ah macam tu okay so now we leave us we leave aside this um, nitrogen kita nak sembang pula pasal Phosphorus Okay So again Phosphorus ni Dia ada uh, Kalau kita tengok sikit lah Dekat nota yang paling panjang ni kan What is the biological importance Of phosphorus Okay Organisms require phosphorus As a major constituent Of nucleic acids uh, Ingat dekat dalam nucleic acid Kita pun ada phosphorus juga kan Ada phosphor Diester bonds uh, Yang dikat oleh phosphor Diester bonds Semua tu kan uh, Phospholipid Namanya pun Phospholipid Misalnya phosphate NATP adenosine triphosphate so nak buat energy tu kan so perlukan fosfate juga okey 
and forms available to live uh, dalam bentuk first wave reservoir the key process tu boleh lah tengok ok nanti <coughs> I mean on your own bukan nanti in this video eh. ok so what is the biological importance phosphorus as a major constituent ni saya dah sebut dah semua tadi so I can just skip ok alright the forms that is available to life in organic form of phosphorus is phosphate mana uh, phosphorus yang bukannya in uh, yang inorganic iaitu tak ada combine dengan apa-apa carbon dia dipanggil sebagai uh, yang biasa ada available adalah uh, dalam bentuk phosphate PO4 3 minus okay which plants will uh, can absorb and use in the synthesis or uh, or organic compounds okay uh, of bukannya or ni seperti of organic compounds okay Reservoir pool. So, phosphate pun ada reservoir pool dia juga. Okay, kalau nitrogen tadi, reservoir pool dia adalah atmosphere. Ha, okay, kalau phosphorus, reservoir pool ni, the main reservoir ni adalah sedimentary rocks of marine origin. Main dekat dalam laut. Batu-batu dekat dalam laut. Okay, others juga terdapat dekat dalam soils. Okay, soils in the ocean, in the dissolved form dan juga dekat dalam organism yang tidak digunakan lah. Mak Maksud tadi tu tidak actively digunakan. Ni cycle okay. So um, Dalam phosphorus cycle ni okay, Kalau kita tengok As water runs over rocks Mana air hujan dilalui kat batu-batu Yang containing phosphorus It gradually erodes Iaitu menghakis the surface uh, The surface of the rock And carries of the inorganic phosphate Okay, the erosion of phosphorus rocks releases phosphate into the soil Maknanya yang hakisan tadi akan masukkan phosphorus tu ke dalam tanah Dan dia akan digunakan, eh, di, bukan digunakan, diambil oleh akar of the uh, plants Okay, in the form of inorganic phosphates Animals obtain most of the required phosphorus from the food they eat Maybe dia makan tumbuh-tumbuhan tu So, baru dia akan dapat phosphorus tersebut <coughs> And later, phosphate is released by decomposers Maybe bila kita dah mati, bila animal dah mati, bila plant dah mati Dia akan release by the decomposers And become part of the pool of inorganic phosphate in the soil That plants can reuse Supaya plant boleh gunakan semula Okay that is the end for this video for this biogeochemical cycle i hope you guys can digest the information well okay so up until now okay so again please do subscribe the channel okay so why do you need to subscribe the channel because you will get the updates on new video that i've posted into this channel and please like and share it with your friends okay until now bye bye and thank you